Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. We are in lesson two. We are looking at multi shaft weaving and, or I could have put on the rigid head of loom. This is the epically creative weaving course. This is module five, and I am Amy D. McKnight. In this lesson, you're going to learn why it's worth learning how to weave multi shaft on your loom, how to weave a draft, and how to draw a draft. All very important things as you're getting started to go beyond the basics, expand your options on what you can do on your loom. Now, really quick, why would you want to learn to weave multi-shaft on your loom? Well, it will give you more options of what you can create on your loom, that's one. And two, it gives you more opportunities of gaining inspiration from books on multi-shaft weaving, books and magazines. Um, there's a really cool wild world out there. And once you understand the concepts that I'm going to teach you in this module, you'll be able to just go and explore it without feeling like you're fettered by having someone else create the pattern for you. By the time you're done this module, I mean, honestly, by the time you're done this particular lesson, watching this particular video, you're going to have the beginnings of the skills to be able to understand how to use any of the books and patterns to my left and how to be able to draw up your own patterns. Is that a big promise? I'm about to, I'm about to keep it in a minute. All right, so let's look at rigid head of loom threading for multi-shaft weaving. First off, let's start with four shaft weaving on three heddles. There is actually a lot more information out there for this. And so we're going to start out with this, but don't worry. I'm about to show you how to do some three shaft weaving on two heddles in a little bit. So first up, you need to understand what each of the heddles represent as it comes to weaving four shaft style on three heddles and um, what's going on. And I will say in advance, this is probably different than what a lot of you have learned, unless you have learned the information that I will cover in the next lesson. Um, but take my word for it, write this down, get it tattooed somewhere. I'm joking. I'm joking. I don't have tattoos myself, but Hey, if you want to, this is something useful, write on a card, laminate it, put it somewhere. And this is your key. This is the Rosetta stone for you to understand how, um, weaving on three weaving three shafts on two heddles or four shaft on three heddles work. All right, let's go. Heddle one is shaft one threads. Heddle one is shaft one threads. Repeat after me. Heddle two is shaft three threads. Heddle two is shaft three threads. All right. Heddle three is shaft two threads. Ah, we, we switched it up a little bit. And heddle four or the pickup stick are the shaft four threads. I'm gonna do it one more time. Heddle one is shaft one, heddle two is shaft three, heddle three is shaft two, and the pickup sticks are the threads that will would go through shaft four. All right? Yeah, I know, I know. You're thinking, what, what? We'll understand why this is in the next lesson. Now let's talk about how a loom is threaded for three shaft weaving on two heddles. It's pretty similar. You should see some similarities. Heddle one is the shaft one thread. So that's consistent. Heddle two is the shaft three threads. Again, there's the consistency. Pickup stick is the shaft two threads. All right. Now I'm going to explain why the heddles are not in consecutive order in the next lesson. But for now, just understand that this is the method for threading that we're going to be using throughout this module. I looked at a variety of different methods, um, looking at different books, and it really does come down to basically two methods. And this is a method why we're, that we're using. And I promise you, as I said earlier, this is the Rosetta Stone what, that will unlock all of everything else. The other methods kind of make it super complicated, way more complicated than it needs to be. Needs to be. All right. So now that we understand basically how we're going to be threading our loom, again, rewatch that section if you need to. Let's look at how to read a draft because by and large, there are no books that are just written for rigid heddle weaving and just says, this is, you know, this is how you're going to do it. There, there are, there are, let me, I'm wrong. Jane Patrick has her book, um, that I showed just a minute ago, but understanding how this works without having to retranslate everything into rigid heddle ease is going to help you so much. All right. So 
a draft has four essential parts. You have the threading, you have the tie up, you have the treadling and the drawdown. Some of these are not gonna be applicable to us. We're gonna look at what they all represent so that we have a basic understanding of what we're talking about. So the threading runs across the top and it guides you to how the loom is, is warped. The tie up is in the upper right hand corner and it tells what shafts are tied to which treadles. Next, you have the lift plan. It runs down the right-hand side and gives you the order in which the treadles are raised. And finally, you have a computer-generated representation of how the weaving would look based on the above, the above three elements. Now, most times the parts are there, but when they are not, enough is there for you to know what to do to recreate a piece of cloth. So that is like the full layout. Sometimes it's written in shorthand. I will be explaining that in modules to come, or lessons to come, I'm sorry, this is the last module, um, as to what to do when you don't have all of these elements. Now, we understand what these four parts are. What do they mean to us as rigid heddle weavers? So again, we have the threading, the tie up, the lift plan, and the drawdown. So the threading is pretty much how you're gonna warp your loom. What threads go through which slots and holes on the heddles? No worries, I wanna show you how this is done in a coming module. We're just getting the concept. This is, this is a conceptual lesson right now, all right? The tie up. This represents what heddles or pickup sticks you'll be using throughout the weaving. This is useful, but it's not really written in stone for us. The lift plan is more important. And here we have the lift plan. It gives the order in which you will raise the heddles to achieve the given pattern. And then you have the drawdown. It serves the same purpose. It basically allows you to see how the final weaving will look. Again, sometimes you will get all of these pieces. Sometimes you'll only get certain elements and it's no, no problem because we are going to be able to figure out how to do what we want with whatever we've gotten. All right, so how to draw a draft. The reason why I'm gonna show you how to draw the draft is because I think that it will deepen the understanding of what you're doing and what, what's happening if you just do this a couple of times. So go ahead and um, maybe watch this video through and then go ahead and gather your supplies. You're gonna need some graph paper and you're gonna need some markers. If you don't have graph paper on hand, no worries, just go to print dash graph paper dash graph-paper.com, look at look what's on the screen. Just, just go to what's on the screen and print yourself out some graph paper and then also grab yourself some markers. You're gonna divide your graph paper into four sections. You're gonna have space for the threading across the top. You're gonna have the lift, lift plan going down the right-hand side and you're gonna have the draw down in the lower main area. So you want to draw this and you wanna label what everything is. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write in the threading there's gonna be one warp thread, hear me, one warp thread per column. Shaft one is the bottom row. Shaft two is the next row up. Shaft three <laughs> is the next row up. And shaft four is the final row at the top. You can either color them in or write them in with numbers. I think that it can be useful to write it in with numbers so that you really are understanding, okay, this is shaft one, shaft two, shaft three, shaft four. You might get a little bit confused if you're doing it with just coloring it in, starting out. Next up, we're gonna write out the lift plan. The lift plan tells us what group of threads on which shaft we need to lift. So sometimes it's a single lift, sometimes it's multiple threads. So some, you can lift you know, one thread, two threads, three threads, if you lift all four threads, you might find your shuttle in your lap because <laughs> you've lifted all four threads. Um, so we're not really gonna lift more than like three threads at a time because you gotta catch the heddle under something, I'm sorry, tangent. All right, we're gonna color in the blocks or write the number of the shaft in the corresponding boxes. So as you can see here, I am pretty much have the same type, I have the same numbers in my lift plan as I have going in the threading. This has a certain name. We're not gonna worry about that name right now. We're just getting the concept. Now, you're gonna color in the drawdown. We're gonna color in the bo boxes under the columns corresponding to the numbers in the lift plan. Y'all remember gridding? My daughter just did gridding. She's in like, well, actually she did it last year, I think. But anyway, it's something you might've done in elementary school. So we're gonna go back to elementary school and we're gonna color in the boxes corresponding to the numbers, it's kind of fun. So 
right here in this example, I'm coloring in number one because number one is representing the lift plan. And so I'm going to color in all the boxes across that are in, in the, where number one is found or in this first um, row. And I'm going to do that for all of them. So I, for number two, I colored in the, the um, boxes that are under the twos, three, did the same thing Four did the same thing. And it is, you'll notice based on the way that I have this threaded, that it is kind of going a mirror opposite to what the lift plan is. We're going to repeat this. And we're going to see that we're getting a diagonal line as we repeat this pattern. And the pattern is going to keep giving us this diagonal line that will continue down our fabric. If we were to continue the pattern. Now, here's an example of what you will learn is 2212. More on what that is later, but this is how you would draw it in. So, first up, I'm going to be, um, so we're going to write out the lift plan, which tells us what threads we need to lift on which shaft. And this particular lift plan, I'm actually going not in order. If I were to go in order, um, like I did up here, I would go one, two, three, four are one, two, two, three, three, four, one, four. However, because I wanted to continue, I wanted, I didn't want to have an abrupt stop and I wanted just to kind of continue. So you're going to see what this does. You can kind of get an idea just by looking at what it's doing here as to what it may do over here. If not, you're going to see in a minute. So I have written one, four, three, four, two, three, one, two, one, four three, four, two, three, one, two. So this is kind of in descending order. We're going backwards down. So we're going from one, four to three, four to two, three to one, two. And then we're going to start again at one, four. What do you get? You get that you get, this is continuing. And so we kind of went this way and then we turned and went that way because we went backwards. You'll learn more about what this is in a later lesson, but as you can see, when we colored in, we just colored in the ones and the fours across. We colored in the threes and the fours, the twos and the threes, the ones and the twos, and then we came back to start our pattern again. And you get this cool little zigzag. All right, now that's all well and good when you're starting out, but you may or may not want to do that, especially when the pattern gets a whole lot more intricate. Welcome to the world of computer generated drafts. That program, this FiberWorks program, you can get it and you can find it at the web, web address on the screen. All right, so this is just one of several different types of computer software that allow you to um, draft and to test out ideas quickly and easily. You can use this particular program for free, but you cannot print or save your work if you do so. However, you don't need this to create a draft, but it can be helpful and time saving if you do get it. So in this lesson, you learned why it's worth weaving multi shaft or why it's worth learning how to weave multi shaft on your original loom. You learned how to read a draft. You learned how to draw a draft. So of course, I'm going to tell you to take action now. Don't just, this is, I mean, it's just information. If you don't do anything with it, follow along with me as I create a basic draft for four shaft weaving using the FiberWorks drafting program. And again, if you haven't already, go ahead and download and print out the expanding your options game board and fill it out as you go. Hashtag creative multi shaft weaving on social media. And I want to invite you to join my weaving community. It may or may not be open at the time when you are watching this video, but take heart. I do open the community periodically. And during those times you can join us and, um, at the supporter level and above, you can get access to study groups, which will allow you to interact with others who are, um, going through this particular module together. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Subscribe. Why are you not subscribed already? Ring that notification bell and share this video. Caring is sharing. There's someone who wants to learn this information. In the next lesson, you're going to learn methods of warping your loom. We're also going to go over the Xanakis technique, and we're going to look at warp, how to warp for four shaft weaving on the rigid head looms. So we're going to start out with four shaft. Um, because that is the most common type of weaving. And then we're going to go on to three shaft in a later lesson. 
I cannot wait to share this with you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.